Let's estimate the area under this curve here by computing the left Riemann sum L6. Now that little subscript 6 means that n equals 6, and n is the number of subintervals that we're going to break this interval into. It looks like our full interval goes from 0 all the way to 12. And if we want to know how big each subinterval should be, we can do the little b minus a over n calculation. And you can see that each one of these subintervals should have a length of 2. There we go. We've split up our interval from 0 to 12 into 6 subintervals. Now for each one of these subintervals, we are going to draw a little rectangle. And because we are computing the left Riemann sum, L6, so for our subinterval from 0 to 2, we are going to use f of 0 as the height of this rectangle. For our next subinterval, we are going to use f of 2 as our height of our rectangle, and so on. Until we come up with six rectangles, that is gonna do an okay job of approximating the area under this curve here. So the width of every one of these rectangles is two. I'm just gonna pull the heights off of the graph, and we'll say that the area of this first rectangle is just two times one. The second rectangle is going to be two times three. The area of the third rectangle is gonna be two times five. The next will be two times seven. Fifth rectangle here has an area of two times five, and the area of the last rectangle angle is going to be 2 times 3. Adding all this stuff up here is giving me an answer of 48, which is the answer, but as a bonus, let's again, just like we did in the last video, rewrite this sum. You'll notice that we got the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 5, and 3 from the function values at the left endpoints, which could be written in this form right here. We could factor a 2 out. That 2 was just a delta x. And instead of giving specific values for all of the endpoints of our subintervals, we can just call them x1 through 6. Of course, this is a really inconvenient way to write this. We have summation notation to help us with this. Our subscript on x is going from 1 to 6. So we can sum from 1 to 6 f of x sub i delta x. And speaking slightly more generally here, if instead of 6 subintervals, we had, say, n subintervals, our approximation of our area under this curve would look something just like this. And you probably recognize that the more rectangles we use, the better our approximation should be. In fact, we can increase n until n goes to infinity, and that would give us the exact area under this curve. If we drew an infinite number of little rectangles in here and added up all the areas, that would give us the exact area under this curve, and the way that we would represent that is with a limit. Okay, so a little bit of bonus math there, because this definition right here gives us some notation that we're going to use very soon.